So we've gone over Substance Designer and now we're going to hop into Substance Painter. The first thing you're going to want to do when you get into Substance Painter is load up a project. Uh, if you want to play with some of the sample files that they have, you can do Open Sample and you can just uh, go into Substance Painter Samples and just open any of these. Uh, another thing you can do is go to File New and it's going to ask you for a couple things. The first one it's going to ask you for is Mesh. So you're going to select a Mesh and I'm just going to go in here to my helmet and select helmet obj and it's also going to ask for some maps now if you don't have any maps baked it's not a big deal as long as you have a high res and a low res we can bake maps and I'll get into that in a little bit uh, but if you have already baked your maps in substance design or xnormal or whatever you can go add and then go ahead and select all of your image files hit ok and then hit ok one more time and what that's going to do is load up my obj and go ahead and import my maps now in this particular case, it is actually going to import my maps and plug them in. So if you name your objects correctly, it'll do this for you automatically. And how do you name your objects correctly? Well, if you noticed when I brought my uh, targets in, it was named helmet sg underscore ambient occlusion underscore curvature id normal position and world space normals. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So you basically have two things you need to name. You need to name the uh, whatever material is assigned to your object. You need to add the shading engine name which is in this case helmet sg and then underscore these right here if you do it in that order and name them correctly it'll go ahead and auto assign the maps now if it doesn't auto assign your maps it's not a big deal all it'll do is throw your images down here into textures and then when you click on these for like normal let's say let's say i don't have a normal i'm going to click this little x button right here it's going to say select normal map, just click it, grab your normal map, and it's plugged in, you're good to go. Um, if you go into Maya, in this case, let's hop over to Maya really quick. Uh, if I select the object here, you're going to see uh, it's a helmet shape one, is, or helmet is the name of it, and then it's got a shape node. It's also got a material assigned to it. The material that's assigned to it is not what I'm interested in. Right now, that's, that name is Helmet Matte. If you click this little back arrow, that'll take you to the shading engine. That name is Helmet SG. So if I go into my Windows Rendering Editor's Hypershade, and I you know, select objects with this material, I double-click this material, uh, that'll send me to the material in the uh, Attribute Editor. So here's the settings for that material. If I click this back button, that's my shading engine. This is what you need to name it. Uh, that that's what's going to show up in the painter and that's also what you need to put in front of as a prefix in here. So you would name all of your targas uh, in this example helmet sg underscore normal and then painter will read it in as a map and automatically plug it in for you. So we've got our mesh and our textures and right now the only thing that's assigned to our object is our ambient occlusion and our normal map. So if we scroll down here you're going to see uh, we have a world space normal ID map, curvature map, and position map. Those are going to be used to add or to help generate masks to create uh, specific types of wear and tear. Now if you already went through the substance designer stuff this will all be old news to you. Of course you're going to use your curvature map to find the edges, you're going to use your position map to do like mud splatter top to bottom, all that good stuff. That all works the exact same way within Painter. You use these specific maps to kind of create and generate different effects on your mesh when we get into the texturing part. Uh, just going down the line here you're going to see uh, we have a thickness map here. I, don't, I didn't bake a thickness map so it's not a big deal. And right now we have four channels. We got a base color, height, roughness, and metallic. Now, for the people who went over the substance designer, this is going to look very similar to if I go to File, New Substance, Physically Based Metallic Roughness Model, you're going to see that the output nodes are base color, normal, roughness, and metallic. So, what we're doing is we're working in a material or a metallic and roughness model. That so when you texture this thing up and you export your maps, you can plug it right in to that model and have it work depending on if you're you know you're using Unreal or whatever. Now that doesn't mean the program you export it to has to use a material or the uh, metallic roughness model. When you go to your export options, there's going to be configurations you can set as well as one thing I forgot to bring up. I believe in the Substance Designer stuff is a there's a base color and metallic node. So this is actually a node that will convert your base color, roughness, and metallic model to a diffuse spec and gloss. So if you're going to go to Octane, let's say, and render your stuff out, you could just throw all of your exported outputs through here, and it'll go ahead and spit out the correct outputs for a spec and gloss model renderer. So just FYI. Uh, so we've got our helmet SG, and that is just the name of that engine group I was showing you. Now, at the very end, I'm going to have the whole model in here, and we're going to have different pieces of the model. So depending on when you're in Maya, if you've got a whole body in here and you have different materials assigned and their shading engines are named uh, individually, it will come into Painter. 
if you export those all as one OBJ, which I'll show you, uh, you'll have different pieces that you can go solo, you can show all of them, and you can kind of click through them and paint them all individually. Uh, so moving down through here, we've got viewer settings. Right now we're using the PBR Metal Roughness Shader. There's one in here for cell, like tune shading. There's one in here for transparency. And here in your environment map is where you can choose which environment you want to have light your objects. So we can go to like a studio type lighting and choose that. And then if you hold down shift and right click, that'll actually spin the environment around. Let's choose a better one than that. Let's go to, um, let's grab like this interior room. Now, by default, it's going to be kind of blurry back here. That's the environment blur. If you crank that down, it'll kind of sharpen up so now you can see, oh, okay, it's inside of a you know warehouse. And you'll see that because this is IBL image-based lighting, it's using the image to actually light your object. So if I'm, as I'm shift right clicking, it's actually rotating that image around. Um, that's the shortcut. If you want to just go over here to a slider, you can do the environment rotation here, environment blur here. Uh, here's the exposure. If you want to crank over crank that or under crank it, depending on if the uh, lighting is doing what you want to do on your object, as well as the environment opacity. If I crank this all the way down to zero, it's still being lit by the environment, but the environment isn't actually visible. And one more thing over here is shadows. If you turn that on, uh, it'll actually crank on some shadows. So as I spin this around and let it kind of sit for a minute, those shadows will kind of resin really nicely. And depending on you know which image you're using to light your object, it'll affect the type of shadow that it casts and, of course, the lighting. Um, this is the same thing we were doing in Substance Designer where we were dragging in different environment maps into our 3D view. Same kind of idea. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn shadows off while we're working, and then if I want to do a beauty render, I can turn shadows back on. Uh, AO intensity is being controlled right here, and it's using our AO map that we have plugged into our channels. Now, there is a way to make changes. You can actually paint on your ambient occlusion map. All you would have to do is go up here to where it says channels, click plus, click ambient occlusion, it'll ask you uh, do you want to throw this into a layer into your um, stack over here and then when you say yes what you can do is actually make addendums or subtractions from your ambient occlusion map. So you can actually paint on your ambient occlusion map, have it be represented correctly through your channels into your shader and uh, you can modify like that. We're not going to do that this pass but uh, we're just going to get in there and have some fun. Uh, you've also got stencil opacity when we get into stencils and then wireframe, wireframe color and opacity and then post effects when we find, do our final beauty render. So enough about that stuff. Let's get in here and start. Um, well, I, I would want to say painting because it's Substance Painter, but actually we're going to play around with materials for a little bit. And then once we're kind of comfortable kind of setting up materials and layering them and how it all works together, then we'll get in there and start painting. <laughs> 